Okay, in this video we'll simplify and then solve by adding or subtracting from both sides. Uh, we'll look at these examples on page one and then these examples here on page two. This one and, sorry, this one and this one. Okay, so let's start with page one and please write this down. 8x plus 3 minus 7x equals 9 minus 8. So that's 8x plus 3 minus 7x equals 9 minus 8. Okay, I hope you've got it written down. Now the trick to learn here is that instead of right away trying to add and subtract things from both sides, we don't do that yet. So instead of, you know, oh, we'll just subtract 3 from both sides and then see what happens, you know. What we want to do is we want to simplify both sides first because that'll make life a little simpler. If you look on the left hand side, you've got 8x minus 7x. Those are like terms, they're x's. You can put those together. What does that make? 8x minus 7x. 8x's take away 7x's makes 1x right what do we also have on the left hand side we also have a plus 3 right that stays there we haven't done anything with that but we have simplified the left hand side now keep the equal signs underneath each other we have now simplified the left hand side to make it 1x plus 3 or x plus 3 you can also just write that as x if you want okay what about the right hand side? How do you simplify 9 minus 8? Well, they're just numbers. Subtract. What do you get? 9 minus 8? 1. So what we have done on this step here is we have simplified both sides. Okay? And that's what we're learning in this video. That the first step is you try to simplify both sides. And then you solve it. So now that we have 1x plus 3 equals 1, this is an equation that we use to solve it. We've got the x by itself. Uh, we, we, we want to get the, sorry, we want to get the x by itself. 3 is being added to it. So we're looking at this as, again, the weighing scales, right? This is a weighing scales. If I want to undo adding 3, what do I do to undo adding 3? Subtract. 3, right, from both sides. If I subtract 3 from this side of the weighing scales, um, it'll tip, okay? We, we want to make the weighing scales balanced, so we must also subtract 3 from this side. See, and you, remember, you keep your equal signs in line with each other, right? So on the left, don't have to write down 0. You know that 3 minus 3 is 0. You know that, surely by now. 3 minus 3 is 0. Don't write it down. On the left-hand side, these make 0, that's fine. You just have x, so just write this down. x equals, so you can do that. No point writing down 0. Why? x equals, and then on the right you've got 1 and negative 3. Put them together. 1 positive and 3 negatives. 1 good guy and 3 bad guys makes 2 bad guys negative 2. So the answer is x equals negative 2. Okay. And by the way, if we check that, that would work out. You would have 8 times negative 2 plus 3 minus 7 times negative 2 should equal 9 minus 8. So if you check negative 2, it should work out. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16 plus 3. Negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. Okay? And that should equal 9 minus 8, 1. Negative 16 plus 3 is negative 13 plus 14. Negative 13 plus 14 is 1. So we should have 1 on both sides if we plug in negative 2. We will have. So that's that's why negative 2 is the correct answer. Right? Okay. So I hope you got the point. Please write the next one down. It's negative 4 minus x plus 2x equals negative 10. Please write that down. Negative 4 minus x plus 2x equals negative 10. Okay, I hope you've got it written down. Now to simplify the left hand side, if you're going to simplify the left hand side, can you put, can you, how would you simplify that left hand side there? 
you've got a negative x and a positive 2x. Can you put those together? What would they make? Negative x plus 2x. Isn't that negative 1x plus 2x? What does that make? One negative and two positives. One bad guy and two good guys makes one x. One good guy, one x, right? Does that make sense? So we have negative four plus one x equals negative 10. Or plus x equals negative 10. Now how do we solve for x? To solve for x, what do you do? Well, you want to get this guy by himself, okay? You want to get x by himself, and there's a negative 4 over here. How do you get rid of a negative 4? How do you, how do you undo a negative 4? What do you do to negative 4 to make it disappear? Well, how about add 4? See, negative 4 plus 4 makes 0, right? So add 4 to that side. If I add 4 to that side, because this is a weighing scales, I need to add 4 to the other side. Okay? If you add so 4 to one side of the balance, you add 4 to the other side as well. right? And make sure your equal sign are underneath each other. You're adding 4 to both sides of the equal sign. right? And on the left, this is going to make 0. We know that. This is 1x or just x. So on the left, we have x. Does that make sense? On the left hand side, you just have x. Write it down. x equals... and on the right hand side we have negative 10 plus 4. What does that make? 10 negatives and 4 positives. Negative 6. 6 negatives. So x equals negative 6. Now if we check that out that also works. All right? Um, so write this one down. Negative 11x plus 6 minus 4x plus 16x equals 0. Negative 11x plus 6 minus 4x plus 16x equals 0. Okay, and s see if you can take the first step on this one. How would you simplify this one? So write it down and try it yourself. Press pause if you need more time. I'll do it now in a sec. So we have lots of x terms. We have a negative 11x, a negative 4x, and a positive 16x. There are three x terms in that equation. Did you see that? So you've got to put all three together. You can do it step by step. You can get negative 15x, write that down, plus 16x. Okay, but don't forget your positive plus 6. But anyway, negative 11 and a negative 4 makes a negative 15. Okay, you can think of this as plus negative 4 if you want. So it's negative 11 plus negative 4, that's negative 15, plus 16. Negative 15 plus 16, so basically it's negative 15x plus 16x is positive 1x. Okay, so that's positive 1x or just x, right? 1x. And don't forget your plus 6. Plus 6. And at this point, a lot of students like to say the answer is 6 and all that type of thing. And they totally forget that what we're doing here is we're solving an equation. Don't forget the equal sign is there. Why haven't you written it down yet if you haven't? Why not? you got to write this down. And then students like to just not write in the right-hand side because it's 0 and, oh, that's nothing. That doesn't matter. 0 does matter. 0 is a number. You can't just ignore it. You have to write it down. Equals 0. You have 0 on the right-hand side. Okay? So we have 1x plus 6 equals 0. Okay? And we're still not done. We actually have to solve for x. So you've got to get this x by himself. How do you undo adding 6? How are you going to undo adding 6? Subtract 6 from both sides, right? So here you have 6 minus 6 is 0, right? And so on the left-hand side you just have x equals what 0 minus 6 or if you put a 0 and a negative 6 together what do you get 0 put together with negative 6 gives negative 6 right now if we check that it should work out as well right especially when you're taking a test always check your answers but occasionally on the homework I wouldn't expect you to check every single homework question but I would check some of them 
especially the ones on the quizzes, right? So check so at least some of your homework, just so at least you have some practice in checking it. So when you get to the test, you actually know how to check your answer. So checking your answer is just taking the the solution negative six and plugging it in to where x was in the equation, right? So negative eleven times negative six is positive sixty-six plus six. Negative four times negative six is positive twenty-four. And positive 16 times negative 6 is um, 16, 6. 6, 6 is 36, carried to 3. 6, 1 is 6, and 3 is 9. That's a negative 96. Okay. So this gives 72 plus 24 minus 96, which is 86 minus 96. No, sorry, it's 96 minus 96 which is 0. So we have 0 on the left and we have 0 on the right. Okay. So this answer of xp and negative 6 did check out and so that was the correct answer. So page 2, 7a, write this down, 7a minus 3 fifths minus 6a equals 7 tenths minus 2 fifths. And after that we'll do this example, right? So write this one down, 7a minus 3 fifths minus 6a equals 7 tenths minus 2 fifths. Okay, so what are we going to do with this one? If you look at the left hand side, do you see that you've got 7a minus 6a and that you can simplify that, right? So what do you get when you put 7a with negative 6a? 7 positives, 6 negatives. 1 positive, 1a, right? But don't forget you still have the negative 3 fifths, so it's 1a minus 3 fifths. And don't forget the equal sign goes here, right? Do a dotted line down your page just to make sure the equal sign goes underneath each other like that. On this side you got 7 tenths minus 2 fifths. You've got to put those fractions together, you've got to subtract. Do you remember how to subtract fractions? You need a lowest common denominator. What's the lowest common multiple of 5 and 10? It's 10, right? So to make this bottom the same as that bottom, what do you do? 5 times what gives 10? 5 times 2. And if you multiply the bottom by 2, you must multiply the top by 2 as well, right? So this gives us 7 tenths minus 2 times 2 is 4 and 5 times 2 is 10. 7 tenths minus 4 tenths, which is 3 tenths. Okay? So we have a minus 3 fifths equals 3 tenths. Now we have to get a all by itself. How would you get a by itself? You've got to undo subtracting 3 fifths. How would you undo subtracting 3 fifths? Add what? Add three fifths to both sides. Okay. So on the left, right hand side now we have to do three tenths plus three fifths. Okay. On the left hand side, by the way, it's negative three fifths plus three fifths, which gives what? What's negative three fifths plus three fifths? Well, that's zero, right? So on the left you have a, just a, equals, and on the right we have to add these guys together. So make the bottoms the same. How do you get a common denominator? So 5 times what gives 10, right? So you multiply the top and bottom by 2 again, right? So this becomes 3 tenths plus 3 times 2, 6 tenths. So this guy becomes 3 tenths plus 6 tenths, which is 9 tenths. So a equals 9 over 10, right? So write this one down and see if you can do it all by yourself. It's 12a minus 1 quarter minus 11a equals 1 half plus 3 eighths. So press pause in your video, do the whole thing yourself. Okay, I hope you press pause and try it. I'm going to do it now. We've got 12a 
minus 11a. We can put those guys together, right? Hope you pressed pause and tried it. I'm going to do it now. 12a minus 11a is 1a, or a, right? But on the left-hand side, we also have the minus 1 quarter. Equals. Equal sign goes underneath each other, right? 1 half plus 3 eighths. We've got to make the bottoms the same. What's the lowest common multiple of 2 and 8? Well, 8, right? So you can multiply this guy by what over what? 2 times what gives 8? 2 times 4, right? 2 times 4 is 8. Multiply the top as well, right? So this guy becomes 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8, so we have 4 eighths plus 3 eighths on the left, right? Or on the right hand side. What's 4 eighths plus 3 eighths? 7 eighths, right? So on the left hand side it's a minus a quarter equals, on the right hand side we got 7 eighths. How do we get the a by itself? Well we've got to undo subtracting a quarter. How do you undo subtracting a quarter? You've got to add one quarter to both sides, right? So if you do that, what happens to the left hand side of the equation? On the left hand side you got negative a quarter plus a quarter which is zero. And you also got an a a equals what? 7 eighths plus 1 quarter. You've got to make the bottoms the same. What's the lowest common multiple of uh, 4 and 8? 4 times what gives 8? 4 times 2 gives 8, right? So multiply this by 2 over 2. So this way we have 7 eighths plus 1 times 2, 2. 4 times 2, 8. We have 7 eighths plus 2 eighths, which is 9 eighths. A equals 9 eighths, right? That's an improper fraction. As a mixed number, of course, it's 1 and 1 eighth. But with algebra, we usually leave it as an improper fraction because they're more easy to work with when we're solving the equations, and you'll see why. Uh, as we go along. But no harm to know how to convert from one to the other. That's always a good thing.